Hello friends, welcome back to another video today. In this video today, we're going to be talking about the UI Builder, which I found a couple weeks ago and I've been playing around with it. And I've been impressed with a lot of the features and the things they have. And as far as the roadmap and the things that they're going to be offering in the future and what it currently offers as well. So I just want to share with you guys and touch on the few things that it does and maybe you'd be interested in what it offers. So if you're new here, my name is Dennis. And I'm a principal software engineer. I make videos on coding, automation, and AI every week. My goal in this channel is to simplify things and make things such as automation, coding accessible to everyone. If you like videos like this, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so you get updated with my videos release every week all right let's get into the video so essentially what it is it's a ui builder you can create websites and applications so currently it seems like it's designed and geared towards designers and developers and it's, it's an open visual development so they have an app builder built in as part of the uh, website itself and if you look up in the products, you also have a Web Studio AI, which you can download desktop applications. So you don't have to be connected to the internet and can work on projects locally and create websites. So a Web Studio is essentially a builder and a lot of the different use cases that that usually comes to mind when using this tool is if you want to build some landing pages or if you are a affiliate marketer, if you want to promote your products and if you want, want to create a landing page for those types of websites they can also post and pull information from an api or to an api so you can do a contacts form they also have a binder where you can bind to an api and your components from third-party api sources and such you can also build some static websites portfolio websites for blogs in the future in, in the roadmap they're going to have support for cms be able to pull information and synchronize your blog for instance it's coming from a headless cms or from a wordpress site you'll be able to sync it and display your data in web studio and publish it and another thing that i really like about this one is so if you scroll down to the bottom is you're not locked in into the hosting provider so web studio acts as a hosting provider for you so they provide the tool and they also in the end their business is really selling the hosting for you so you can build your website and you can host it in their platform if you do comparison between them and a different platform web studio is an open source platform which i really love that's why i do support open source platform is they're open to the public and you'll be able to see their code what they're saying here is you can self-host your application so if i'm going to be showing you guys this in a little bit but essentially when you compile and export your project and pull down into your, your desktop you're essentially just downloading an actual project that you can export to somewhere else so there's no proprietary components block or com proprietary technology that web studio is offering in the end there if you're are a web developer or you're familiar with some of the web technologies out there they're essentially running on top of remix which is a framework on top of our react once you export the code and pull down and sync the application down to your local machine you're going to be downloading a remix application so essentially you can push this to something like first cell or so you can push it up to something like Netlify if you're familiar with this platform. Behind the scenes, they're hosting it behind the Cloudflare workers. So they're essentially serviceless applications that allows you to deploy multiple servers in different locations across the globe. So it's meant for speed since the servers are distributed across the different networks. So depending on where your users are, they're going to be served up with where the server is the closest to them. So essentially that's what it is. And the benefit of having a serverless computing is that you're going to have a backend services that are used on a as use basis. So you're not being charged for anything if you're not using that server. So that's the benefit of it. And you, you don't have to worry about uh, the deployment of the code. You just have to focus on writing the code. That's the benefit of it. And like I mentioned before, they're an open source project. You can go to their resources and you can easily just hop into their GitHub and you can see the code. So if at some point in the future, something happens to Web, Web Studio and they go down and, and re relying on their infrastructure to build your, your websites, you can easily just take a look at the code and pull it down and make some changes. I 
took a look at it for a little bit and just examine the commits and the structures are. Like I said, I'm going to be showing you guys a, a demo on how it looks like and how everything works so you can have a feel of how good this tool is. I went through the code and just look at all the resources and I like what I see so far. They have a nice roadmap. Let's take a look at the roadmap here. So they have a, a roadmap that's in GitHub. They did release the template marketplace. They did release some nested routing, some bindings, which is pretty important if you want to bind to a third party API and you can actually have a real time data getting into your application. They did have some SEO update and then they also introduced a bunch of stuff such as the Radix UI components, which is a popular UI components when you're building applications. So there's a lot of stuff that they're using that's not really proprietary, which is nice. That means that they're, they're using some stuff that that is industry standards and what everyone's using now these days when it comes to web development. So. There's some things in progress, such as the CMS integration. Uh, one thing that I'm excited about is their versioning and also being able to take in and reuse some of the Tailwind. If, so if you're a developer, Tailwind is a popular library for styling your website. So being able to not really take and ingest Tailwind, but being able to copy the styles or the the classes that are built into Tailwind would be nice addition into the Web Studio platform. So there's some other stuff too, as that's just a real time collaboration that is currently that that's going to be in in the future that's coming. Hopefully they can integrate that. And there's also the apps marketplace. So in addition to the template marketplace, the template marketplace allows individuals to be able to sell templates so if you go to a webflow which is a the com direct competitor they have a marketplace where people can make money and sell their templates and have it available for everyone if you just want to be able to just whip out a website specific to your needs for instance they do have templates for yoga you have templates for finance you have templates for all kinds of website real estate template from nutrition Let's take a look at one of these. It looks pretty cool. So everything's here. So this one cost 70 to 79. Okay. And they do have all these like different pages that's associated with this. You have blogs and basically a complete website out of the box for you to use. If you see the roadmap, that's where they're going with this. So like I said, they're direct compared to Bubble, Webflow. I haven't really worked with any of those. I don't really do a lot of no code, but I do see as a developer the benefits of using something like this, like a web builder for everyone. I know that it's targeted towards designers and developers, but I, I still believe that anyone can just pick it up if you spend enough time and just look through it. It reminds me of, of a tool back in the days called Dreamweaver or Front Page or the Front Page. Back in the days when web development was new and everyone just getting into web development, the biggest players back in the days was Streamweaver, where you can just drag and drop components into the screen. You can see visually what you're working with as far as the website. So when I see these web builders, I can't help but think about the old technologies or old tools that back in the days when I first getting started into web development. Before we get into anything, let's take a look at the documentation first. So when you're first getting started into Web Studio, I think it's a great idea to just look at the, do the documentation here. So there's the foundations, there's the, the core components, which is the building blocks for building the application. So everything that you see on the screen, each one of them is a component, as I'm gonna be showing you guys in a little bit. There's also the, the self-hosting and CLI. They also have a, a CLI that it's a command line interface that allows you to synchronize your local code with the projects that are in Web Studio online. I'm going to show you guys a little bit how, how this works. And you can see here, currently they do support the Vercel and Netflify. So if you want to build and target those providers, you can export it and publish it to those providers as well. Obviously, when you download the code, it's going to be in a remix project. So you can pretty much outside of Vercel and Netflify, you can host it anywhere, even on Amazon or on Azure if you want. So. Any provider that works with Remix or React application, you can pretty much host it with your application. Let's create a new project in Web Studio. So when you first land into Web Studio, you're going to be presented the screen. It's going to be a clean canvas. You have your resources on the top and then your projects in the middle. 
and then your templates on the bottom. So currently they only have four templates that you can use that's built in. I believe the, the templates is, is going to grow as you're going to have access to the marketplace where people are going to be selling their templates. But currently the free templates that they offer currently are at the bottom. So if you want to get started and just use one of those templates that they have, you can do that. So let's go and just jump in and just create a new project based on a current template. Just click on that. And we're just going to call this demo SaaS as that's what the template is called. After a few seconds, you're going to be landing in this page where you have the builder. You're going to be seeing the breakpoints where you can see all the different aspect ratio for the website from a different views. So which is nice, you don't have to jump into another tool just to access the different breakpoints. And from here, you can add additional breakpoints. So I can edit the breakpoints and add a new one. Let's say I want to add a 1280. Here, I just want to specify it and max width and specify the 1280 here as a breakpoint. So I labeled it as, I'll just, let's, let's say this label is a desktop, for instance. I'm just coming up with a breakpoint here. So you can see here, you see a 1280 on the top. You can click on it and you can see what the, based on the certain breakpoint, you're going to be seeing the different views for that website looks like, which is nice, especially when you're working with a lot of websites, you, can, you want to see how it looks like. You can also change the aspect ratio by dragging and clicking on this, on this uh, side here. You can see here and move it around. You can move it and see how it looks like as it progresses and changes. The hamburger gives you back to the dashboard and you can go back to the project by clicking on this. And then if you just want to look at the project settings, for instance, if you want to change the site name, if you do d decide that one of the pages needs to be changed to a different page, you want to do some redirect, you can do that here. If there's any additional things that you want to add here as part of the marketplace, let's say you, you, you create this project and you decide later on that you want to sell this as part of the marketplace, you can click on this and you can have it reviewed so it can be listed in the marketplace aside from just being building it for your own use case. Another thing that you can also you do here is you can do add do redo and you can also do preview and share public. So same thing that you can do from the top here. Uh, you can also create a clone. If you want to duplicate this project, you have the share on the top. If you want to share this to another person or if you want someone to take a look and also work with this, would you? You can create a share link where you can copy it and just give it to another person. So this allows another person to be able to clone it or you can copy it or you can also allow them to actually build this or be an admin as well if you want to be able to give this to another person. So that's one of the things that you can do when you're sharing, you want to share this project with another person. And like I mentioned earlier, you're, you're not tied into the, the platform that they have. You can also publish this and be able to export. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this in a little bit, but you can export it to, to your local. You can see here that it will show you the steps on how to export this locally by running some of the commands here from the CLI in your terminal. So if you want to be exported to Vercel, they have some instruction here as well. I'm going to be showing you guys do that. One thing that also you can do is to publish it on the web. So they, they give you this custom URL that you can visit your website. You can just click on that publish. So this takes a little bit of time as it's going to compile your code and then it's going to push it up into its own domain that anyone can see on the internet. After quite some time, you can check out your website, but after so quite some time, you can click on this one where you can proceed and take a look at the website. You can click on that one. You can see that your website is now available to a custom domain that they have. So you can look at it and see how it looks like. You have the about pages and about the pricing pages, which are totally separate pages. I'm going to show you guys around and show you how it looks like. So you can see here in the top, you can navigate to the different pages. So right now I'm currently on the homepage. You can navigate to each one and inspect uh, the different components and how it stacks to each other. So uh, you have a content here where it's pretty much the what holds the different components together. You have different containers here. For instance, like I have a container for the nav. They have a container for the content wrapper. They have a footer. And then they have the BIW button, which is on the bottom. So you can inspect that. You can see here that every time you click on a, a component here on the left side, it's highlighting the, the specific component that you have on the builder itself. You can see here that there's an image and then there's a text as part of the web button. So inside the web button, you have the image and the text and it's, it's inside within the container. And on the right side, you can set the different properties. Let's take a look at the image. You can see here, there's, there's like a class or a token associated with this image. 
You can go through each one. You have access to the space, what type of layout you want to use. So you have to know a little bit of CSS to understand what block and flex, what inline block is. So it's a few things that you have to learn, mostly some terminologies if you are a front end developer working with the UI. Obviously, the size, the, the different dimensions that goes with this, you can play on and change the dimension. Let's say I want to change this to 20 pixel. That's going to make the image 20 pixel in width. So you can play around some of these settings here, some positioning. You can change the font if you want. You can change the weight of the font, you know, how thick you want the font to be. The colors, there's a picker here where you can choose. You can't really change it for the image because that's that's an image. But if you go to a text, let's say I want to go to a text, you can see here that I can change typography to something else and it will change it in real time. You can see here in the middle of the preview of how it looks like. So there's a lot of things here, such as the background. So everything that you have access to when you're working with CSS, cascading style sheet is available here, such as the box shadow, the effects for the different properties for that text. All these things that you can set to. If you want to change the text, you can go and switch to settings. You can see here it says built with uh, Web Studio. And I can change this built by Dennis here and click away. And that's in real time here. You're going to see the changes that I have. And every time I want to make this change available again, I need to click on publish. That's currently when I'm working on the website, it's currently on edit mode. So this is, takes a little bit of time. It's going to publish the website. Visit that in a little bit. You can see the website and explore it in a little bit. On the left hand side, you have access to components. So you hit the plus symbol. You have access to the box. So like I mentioned before, each of the components inside a page can contain a container. So that's pretty much the box. Anything that houses the components is a box. You have access to the links, the list. If you want to include a list, you have a access to list item separate. A slot is a container, so it's different than a box. A box is just a box that holds different items. And essentially, it allows you to, to group the, the, the components within your page. A slot is different. When you change anything in the slot, if you're reusing that slot across a different parts of the page, uh, it's going to change. Anything that you change within that slot is going to take effect anywhere within the page. You do have access to HTML embeds. So if there's anything that's not available in the component, let's say you're integrating a third party form or contact form from a different website, you can include a HTML embed here. So when I click on HTML, it immediately added it into the page. And on the right hand side, you can change the property. You can add a script tag here. And you can also include some HTML as well. If you want to include some additional HTML, if you're copying and pasting it from a, a different platform, you just want to include it here. You do have access to certain properties as well, such as client only and run a script on Canvas. If you want to scope it down to a Canvas, you can also add a name here. You can also show or hide a component as well. And you can just easily just work with this component right here as well. So, and if I just want to delete it, I can just click delete. So from here, let's say I want to click and delete this component that's down here. I can just click the delete button and that will just delete that. And then control Z if I want to undo that. Let's come down and look at the components in a little bit more. The text is just a generic container for the text. The heading is what you see here on the top. So this is a, a heading right here. This is a, it's an H tag. If it's just a paragraph, this is a text you see here. And then they also have a box you see here, the box can be, can contain a box so within the box you can have a box that can hold different things so in this case you have a box that holds a text and an h tag and then at the bottom you have multiple texts as well and then you have a link on the bottom here and then let's take a look at other ones you can embed some videos as well you can do vimeo and i've seen uh, youtube embedding into as part of the, the page as well you can do images like a few mentioned, you can do forms as well. You can do form submissions. So if you want to include and, and submit this to a, to a third party API, this will automatically give you a, a form tag here, which will allow you to submit a form. Let's take a look at the forms in action here. So in order for the forms to work, you need to be able to add a an action here on the action input here on the form. But you have to make sure that the input it has a correct if you go scroll down and add 
and dissect each individual input. You need to be able to add the corresponding name to it. So depending on what you want this form to have, for instance, this one is going to be the name and you click on the text input. This one's going to include the email. So we want to make sure that those ones are properly set for the form to be submitted properly. And that's going to be set as part of the body when you submit this form. So when you set up this form, you have to make sure that you put the webhook or the API that you want to be sending this form to. So I, I went ahead and set up a webhook here when where I can set up and submit the form. I can copy this, this URL here, copy link this URL, and then that's where I'm going to be putting it. So I'm going to be putting the URL here as part of this action and then I need to click publish. Once this one has been published, we can test the form when we submit this form into that webhook. Once the publish has completed, we can go back to the page and refresh it. You can see me see the new, new version here with the name in the email, and then we can submit this. Let's say I want to submit this and, and submit my email and click submit. Also, you notice here, there's also a thank you for getting in touch here, which is a success message. You can configure this as well. And this is where you can configure how it looks like on the screen. You can see here the thank you for getting in touch message. And you can also configure the error message if there's anything that happened uh, when submitting that the form if, if it fails for some reason. When I go back to the uh, active pieces here, you can see that the current submission that I had includes my name and my email as part of the body of that post. From here, you can pretty much do anything that you want once I have the submitted form in Active Pieces or whatever API you have going on. It could be a Zapier or anywhere else. So that's how easy it is to construct a form and submit a form to a, an API or a webhook. So let's explore the different components as well. They do have the navigation menu. Let's take a look at some of the Radix components here. I think the easier easy one to understand is this tooltip. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. For instance, let's say I want to add a tooltip here. Let's say I want to add a tooltip here when I when I hover over this button right here. So let's find where I want to place it first. So let's say I want to add it as part of this one. So I just click on this one. It's just going to highlight where I'm at in the navigator. So if I want to add a tooltip as part of that, I can just go back to the components and select on the tooltip. And this is going to bring it up next to where the item that I highlighted that's going to bring it up so you inspect the tooltip and see what it does you can see here that there's a trigger to this tooltip and there's also a content so they give you a sample uh, button here so you can see how it works let's toggle the preview so you can see here when I hover this button you can see that there's a text that's going on the top that's the tooltip that I add to this uh, page let's turn off the preview here let's say I want to change that in instead of having the button here to do the tooltip i'm going to move the tooltip to be associated with this all i have to do is just to drag the link inside of that tooltip so instead of the button i can delete that button and then i can highlight that link and drag it and drag it inside of that tooltip trigger and now that's locked in and that's going to be part of this tooltip trigger whatever i highlight it's nested within that tooltip trigger it's going to be the, the trigger for this so if i go back and click on the preview and see that the button's gone and now the, the or tooltip is now associated with this button. So that's how easy it is to work with the components. Let's take a look at the other ones as well. The obvious ones are the images and some other stuff as well. So those are the components that you can use. They also have some marketplace as well. You can see here there's pages like I've shown you guys in the templates before. There's also some sections here which I haven't really used as much. Let's take a look at how that looks like. Let's pick a spot here. Let's say I want to put it underneath below this footer wrapper. Let's click on the footer because I want to place it below that. So let's try it out. Let's go back to the marketplace and then let's click on one of these guys. Let's say I want to click on this one and there's like other, some other stuff here as well. It looks like these are just pages. I have some progress bar here. Go click on that one and see how, how, how it works. Oh, you see here, it does add this progress bar on the top. So that's pretty much what it does. So there's some things here that you can add, such as the progress bar. So as you scroll down the page, it pretty much added. So let's go back into the page, into the, the navigator here. So since I selected the footer where I want to place it, so it added the content here that has the progress bar and the caption here on the bottom. So you can see here, if we do a preview here, you can see that as I scroll down or up the screen, you can see the progress bar on the top. So that's pretty much what it added here.
So that's what it did when I added that. So that's the components. You'll be able to go through each page and just inspect it and add different components and you can stack it and embed the components inside of another component. So you just play around with that one. One thing that I also want to showcase, let's go back to the dashboard, is the AI feature. So let's create a new project here. So let's say I want to do a test AI project. So the last link is on the left hand side. It's called the AI. So that which is a new feature that they just introduced. So let's click on that one. It's going to give, bring up this prompt or stay on the bottom where you can do a either a speech or you can just type in your prompt. And if you click on this one and expand on it, you're going to be able to see and learn more about this. Or there's some predefined prompts here that you can use as part of this web builder. Let's take a look at this one. Let's say I want to do a two column feature section with a heading and subheading let's say i want to do that and that's going to copy the prompt at the bottom and let's click on generate ai model all right after a few minutes it, it created a, a two column feature section with a heading so it created a two column feature section with a heading and the subheading in the left column and image that covers the right image so it exactly did what i what i want to do let's add the footer here i highlighted the box here actually let's click on the body here okay add a footer to the bottom of actually let's do add a st sticky sticky footer at the bottom of the page that has by dennis 2024 screw that add a sticky footer at the bottom of the page that has created by created by 2024 let's collapse this one it did create a new footer on the bottom but created by Dennis 2024. And if I do a preview on it, you can see here this, you can see the, the preview and it has the footer at the bottom of this. So it, it was able to understand and create the footer based on the prompt that I provided. I have to highlight the body here so it knows exactly where, where to, to add it or nest it. I think it would have have a different result if I click on the box and then specified it as I would have probably put it in the box. So I think it matters where you wish to select it. So in this case, it was able to create a, a box here and just like a regular div and then just added text content of, you know, so that's the AI feature that they have. Let's say I want to publish this somewhere. Let's take a look at the publishing. Like I mentioned earlier, you can click on the publish and it's going to publish it to a custom domain that they have in web studio all right after a few seconds you see the green mark here and then you can proceed and take a look at that website that you created so now it, it does have that sticky footer in the bottom which is nice and then you have the scrollable content up the page and it, it's published on this website i'm not going to go through and do a custom domain but i'm going to show you guys let's say i want to be able to host this on a different provider such as Vercel, which I use. Let's take a look at how we can move this into a different cloud provider such as Vercel. So in order to do that, you need to publish this project. You can do that by doing a publish here. And I'm going to make clicking on publish. Now, the next thing you want to do is click on that export button, which is on top of the publish button. You can do click on the export there's an instruction here the step by step on how to do that you need to install at least version of node version 18 on your desktop to be able to uh, pull this project into your local environment and you need to have node.js installed in your computer so you can go to uh, node.js you have to install uh, node.js so i already have uh, node.js version 20 you need a minimum of version 18 installed on your desktop Okay, so once you have that installed, there's also a couple of things that you need to run. Let's copy this command into your terminal, and this is going to install Web Studio CLI into your desktop. Let's switch to our local directory. So once I'm in my local directory, I copy that npx Web Studio command. It's going to go run it and run it, npx Web Studio. And this game is going to install Web Studio on your desktop. Since I already have it installed, it's not going to download the Web Studio. Again, when you first load up NPX Web Studio, it's going to ask you to install Web Studio. It's going to install Web Studio on your desktop. In my case, since I already have installed, it went and, and straight into the actual creation of the, the project. So would you like to create a project folder? So if you just want to just, you want to create it on the current directory, let's say you created a new project, a new folder already, and you want to use that instead, you can just click no. But if, if I'm in a directory where I want to create, a new directory where I want to put all the project 
file, then I want to click on yes, and that's going to create the project. So in this case, I did went ahead with a project. So I'm going to name this project name, let's say demo project. So that's what I'm going to mean in the project. And, it and now it created a folder within the directory. I'm going to go back into Web Studio, go back to the publish and you need to copy. You need to copy and create and click on the share link. And this is going to create a custom link. You need to copy that link that ge is generated for you. Once you're back in the terminal, we're going to paste that, that link that you generate via the share custom link. And we're just going to paste that. So from here, you're going to be able to see where would you like to deploy the application. You, you can choose vanilla if you just want to host it somewhere else. Or you do have an option to host it in Vercel or Netlify function. You can use the arrow keys to be able to kind of move around the CLI. I'm going to choose Vercel. In this case, it's asking you what would you like to install dependencies. I'm going to hit click hit Y and that's going to pull down the dependencies. And now the project has been synchronized successfully. It's been downloaded to my local directory and now it's installing it's the dependencies. It's doing an NPM install for those libraries. This could take a little bit of time depending on how many dependencies available, but usually it shouldn't take that long, maybe a couple of seconds. But once the project has been pulled down into your local desktop, it went ahead and installed the dependencies. And see here, you can go to your desk project. As you can see here that you can set CD demo into this project. We're gonna we can do that. I'm gonna do CD demo since there's only one. I can get click tab and go to that one. And then if I want to run that folder, actually let's browse it through Visual Studio Code. Let's by doing that by by putting code dot and then hit enter. And this is gonna launch Visual Studio Code. So let's go and inspect this project that we pulled down from the Web Studio website. And see here, it's just like a regular remix project. It's configured, it has configuration here. You can see the package.json. You can see the different dependencies here. It's essentially it's React project. And you can see the, the remix. You can see the different types, different dependencies. And here's the different commands that you can run on your NPM. Let's take a look at the project itself. It has like a public directory. It has a node module as always. And then there's an app which contains the routes, the different, the routes for the project. In our case, here's the layout of what the, the remix project looks like. And you can expect it. You can make some changes to it. If you decide that you just want to host it somewhere or just want to, you want to create the project from a web studio and bootstrap it from there. And then from there on, once you get the layout and have everything built out, you can pull that project and then you can further enhance it and do some additional development on your local machine. You can run this project. If you go to pack, package.json, you can see here that dev uh, remix.dev, you can do a npm run dev, which is included here. You can go to the terminal and proceed with running this. So let's run this. Just like a regular Remix project or a React project, we can run this locally on my head machine. So now it's building it. Now it's been successfully built. It says here localhost 3000. That's where I can maybe control click it. And you can see here I'm running on localhost 3000. It's the same view that we saw when we browsed it from a web studio. You can see here everything's the same including the footer that it created. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to push this up into Vercel. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So next step is to publish to, to, to Vercel. Let's take a look at how it, how it works. So once on the step two here, this is how you run it to your local and how to install it on your local machine. The next step we're going to do is we're going to be pushing this project to Vercel. Since that's the one that I use, I also use Netlify, but in this case, we're just going to be using Vercel. Let's jump into Vercel real quick and see how, how it works. So essentially, I have all my projects in Vercel. I'm currently logged in. So you need to have an account in Vercel. It, it's, it's free. If you don't have a Vercel account, you can just sign up for a new account and you can sign up for their, their free account. So you don't have to pay for anything at this point. So once you have that, you're going to be, you're going to see here the command. You can either select Vercel or Netlify, depending on which one, which provider you want to host it in. So I chose Vercel. I'm going to be using NPX Vercel. So let's copy that command here and say NPX Vercel. All right. So set up and de deploy. I'm going to click on yes, since we already are in the directory of the project and click on yes. Which scope do you want to deploy in? I'm just going to select Dennis 
my project. If you have multiple projects, you can use the arrow keys to select the one that you that you want to use. I'm gonna go and click on yes. And then for linking to existing project, I'm gonna click hit no because there's no existing project. What's your project name? So by default, it's gonna have the demo project, which is what the project is named. If you want to name it to something else, you can type it here. In this case, I want to use the demo dash project. So I'm going to hit enter. Then to which directory is your code located in? So if you are already in the directory of the project, you don't need to, you just need to click enter. But if it's like in a different directory, then you need to add and type in the directory of the project. So we're going to uh, click on that one. And then it's auto detected the settings. It detected that it's a remix project. So I went ahead and found what build com command that it needs to use, what's the development command, what type of, what's the installation as far as installing the, the different packages, and then the output directory is public. If I want to modify this settings, I, I would need to click on yes. But since it detected it properly, I'm just going to click enter no. And this now is deploying this project the demo project into this url it says not a git repository that's not really an issue it's currently they're building the project and see this is the building step and then once it does the build it's gonna and push and publish this project onto this url here which is my project and then this current project here so it now it's been deployed to the production if I want to push this in production, I need to run dash prod, which you need the Vercel CLI to do that. But in this case, we're not going to be doing that. If you need to install Vercel, you need to do npm install Vercel. So this command right here. So this is going to install Vercel in your local development environment and globally. So if you want to push out to production and deploy to production, you need to run the command Vercel dash prod. So in our case, we just push it out into a, a domain that's created by Vercel. I'm going to go ahead and exit it. You can control click on that one. And this is going to launch and get us to Vercel where it gives us the status of the project. So right now it's been deployed to the server and the setup is ready and the environment is production and duration is 27 seconds ago. And you can see the domains here. If you can set your custom domain, if you want to over here as well, and you can see all of the, the different details of the deployment. So again, visit that one. So now you have exactly the same project that's running on Vercel that, that was running locally and that was also running on the web studio. You can see here the end-to-end -end deploying and exporting that project. So you don't have to worry about if something happens to web studio sometime in the future, you, you'll be safe to know that your project is safe. You have the local copy of your project. You can tweak it as you wish. You can push it to a GitHub repository and that you're not locked in into a provider such as Web Studio. Last thing I want to touch on is the pricing for Web Studio before we end this video. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pricing. So currently there's a free plan. You don't have to pay at all for to use Web Studio. You can use up to five custom domains if you want to tie a project to a custom domain and expose it publicly to the internet you can do that you can create unlimited projects in here and say unlimited sites and unlimited pages unlimited collaborators under a, a free plan you can use web builder to just bootstrap and create a project from scratch create the ui build if you're not comfortable with building your application uh, this is a good first step just to learn the basics of building websites without really understanding HTML. You can tie it up to five custom domains entirely for free and you can do trend form submissions like I showed you earlier. But if you decide to go with a pro plan, you do have unlimited custom domains. But the only limitation here is the amount of page views, that unique page views that you get per month. This is not per user. This is the amount of unique page views per month, not per user. So this is across all your different websites. You have access to 100,000 page views. You have a similar plan as the hobby, except you have a lot more page views. And you do also have unlimited form submissions. They also have CMS integration that's coming up in the future that you can take advantage of if you want to synchronize your data with something like a headless CMS or something like that. And you also have access to dynamic edge data bindings if you want to populate your website through an API or something like Superbase or Airtable or Airtable. Or you can use the data binding for that. And also coming up is the virtual history 
you also will have access to that as well as real-time collaboration if you are collaborating with multiple people with creating projects so that's one of the pro feature a deal that have they have right now that's going on on their website is a pro lifetime 2 t2 membership and also a pro lifetime t3 main membership which gives you a million page views per month so if you're running an agency or if you want to support the project or if you want to be able to build a website for yourself or for clients this is a good plan to have and you're not really trying to export it into a different hosting provider such as Vercel or Netflify or AWS or Azure whatever have you if you just want to keep everything in web studio you just want to build a project here and we just want to host it here and click publish and you're done this is the way to go in my opinion so currently do do have 1 million page views across all your projects and you have the unlimited stuff as well uh, you can also jump into the pro lifetime which is unlimited page views which is which is pretty insane right now they do have an absolute deal where you, if you want to match the two plan here with 1 million page views the closest one that they have is the tier 4 here which actually do have a double amount of page views so if you want a limited custom domains tied up to your project and you have an enterprise type of domain where you have a lot of page views then this is a the way to go if you're planning on doing a blog here you're moving all your blog and your content management uh, system as part of this or, or you have some clients you're building up some websites for your clients i think this is the way to go yeah but if you decide you can also go with a tier three which is almost similar to what they're offering here except the one on their website is custom domain so i think the cheaper option here is if you go with the tier, tier four and that you're also doubling the the total page views per month so that wraps it up for this video if you'd like to see any type of video in the future please leave it in the comments i appreciate every single one of you and click on like share and subscribe to my channel if you like to see more videos like this and i'll see you guys next time peace